Okay, in this video, we're looking at UBC Math 100, past final exam 2016, question number 12. Um, first off, here's the question. Uh, you can take a, a minute or two to read the question and try to get an idea of what's going on here. Okay, hopefully you pause the video and take a look at this question. Um, here we have a cone with height two meters and a circular base with radius one meter. We first mean to draw the situation. But also notice that we want the dimensions with largest volumes. This is kind of like an optimization question, right? We want to optimize for largest volume. And so we're going to draw a situation, try to come up with some type of a uh, relationship between variables here. Okay, the first thing is you need to draw it out. So, okay, so here is our cone and our cylinder is inside the cone. Okay, so maybe I'll draw it like this, maybe like that. that contained inside and okay just the fact that they say circular cylinder that just means that the cylinder has a circle at its base so kind of the regular kind of cylinder that you're uh, used to now what do we know about this well we know that the height of the cone is actually two meters so this entire height here is two meters and we also know the radius of the cone is one meter so this entire radius is one meter like that Okay, but what we want to maximize is the volume of the cylinder. So you can imagine that this cylinder might have a particular volume, but if I made it a bit uh, shorter and wider, it would have a different volume. Or if I made it you know, narrow and taller, it would have a different volume. And our goal is to figure out the sweet spot. What, what height and radius of our cylinder would produce the largest volume? Okay, now to that end, you have to remember the volume of a cylinder formula, right? The volume of a cylinder, is pi times the radius of the cylinder squared times h. Okay, This is a general formula. So that's what we're going to use here. Volume is pi r squared h. The thing is, is that volume we want in terms of only one variable, either r or h, but not both. And so we're going to need another equation to help us eliminate one of the variables. Okay, So let's look at the diagram once again. R on this diagram is this radius here, this length here, the radius of the cylinder. Similarly, the height or the H of the diagram is this height here, the height of the cylinder. So now if you look at this diagram, you can try to figure out what relationship between R and H we can find. This is, might be, you have to think about this for a while, but uh, once you do, you'll know, recognize that it's a similar triangle situation. And let me redraw this just so we just see the triangle. It comes from this triangle here, going down, straight down from the top of the cylinder across, and it has a side length here. And the second triangle that's here could be this triangle here. So if you take a look, um, I'm going to draw it here. It goes across the cylinder, and it goes up to the top of the cone. These two triangles, the green and the orange, are similar triangles. Now I'm going to draw it over on the side here so that we can get a, just in other words, just look at the length themselves. We don't have to get all the geometry of the cone and stuff involved. Okay. What are the lengths of these two triangles? Well, we have two as our big height here. We have H as this length, because that's the height of the cylinder up to this line. We have r, right? Uh, if this is r at the radius, well, so is this r, right? I could have labeled it up here as well. Um, this is going to be r. And finally, we have the base of the big triangle, which is going to be 1. OK, this is what we have. Now we have to think about what does similar triangles say? Well, it says the ratio of co corresponding sides of the two triangles are equal. What that means is, for example, the ratio of the big height to the smaller height is going to be the same as the big base to the smaller base. So for example, we can have two divided by this length. Okay, well, what's this length? Well, if this entire thing is two and this is H, then the leftover part here must be two minus H, two minus H. Or 2 minus h plus h gives us the total 2. Okay, So similar triangle says we can say 
2 divided by 2 minus h is the same as the big base divided by the small base. So for example, 1 over r. And this is our relationship. Now, again, we have remember our goal here is isolate or uh, eliminate one of the two variables. Now, we can actually do either of those. We can actually solve for r or solve for h. I'm going to solve for h because then we won't have to square the result, right? If I solve for r, we're going to have to square it, which makes the math a bit more complicated. Although, if you can, if you can do it and do the algebra, that's no problem. Um, so here, we're going to cross multiply. So I have 2 times r is the same as 1 times 2 minus h. Okay. Then solving for h, um, you know, I can rearrange things a bit, and I'll get h is... 2 minus 2r. OK, very nice. Now we have h in terms of r, and we can substitute that in here. So I'm going to have pi r squared times 2 minus 2r. OK, from here, remember, the goal is to optimize v. So we want to take the derivative of the right-hand side, or, or you could say of both sides, and figure out the radius that would make this maximum. Now, to, before we do that, we're going to simplify things a bit by multiplying the r squared in. Okay, so if I do that, I get 2r squared minus 2r cubed. You could also multiply the pi in, but pi is just a constant, and so we can just leave it out front, and we take the derivative. It's no big deal. Okay, now if I take the derivative of both sides, I'm going to get dv dr equals pi, and then I have to take the derivative of this. Well, it's going to be 4r minus 6r squared. And when we're optimizing, our goal is to find the maximum. And to do that, we need to find where the critical points, which is where the derivative is 0. So we want to figure out when is this 0. OK, well, it's just pi times this. So I could just divide both sides by pi to simplify the equation first. The next thing I can do, this is a quadratic equation right? for r. So because there's no constant, notice we can there's an r in both terms, so we can actually factor that out as a common factor. There's also a 2 in both terms, so just to make things a bit simpler, we can actually factor out 2r. You don't have to factor out the 2, but it just makes things a bit simpler. What we're going to have left is 2 minus 3r. Okay. Then I'm going to we need to solve for r. Either this is going to be 0, in which case r equals 0, or this is going to be 0. And if you solve that one, you're going to get r equals 2 over 3. Now, because it, r is a radius, we can't have r be 0, right? The radius of 0 is clearly not going to be, going to be a maximum volume if there's no radius. So we're going to take r equals 2 thirds as our maximum value. OK? Then we need to figure out, to answer the question, we need to find the dimensions of the cylinder with largest volume. We found the radius. We also need to find the height, right? Once you know the radius, you can figure out the height. And those are our two dimensions. Well, the height is given by 2 minus 2r. This is the relationship between height and radius. So in other words, h is 2 minus 2 times 2 thirds. And then if you do the math here, you're going to get h is equal to 2 thirds. OK, so our final answer is the radius should be 2 thirds, and height should be 2 thirds in order to get the maximum volume of the cylinder. That's all for this question. If you found this helpful and you're interested in a full guide for this entire past exam, as well as other past exams, check out my full solution guide at the link below this video. It has step by step written explanations and solutions, and it can help you study for your exam more effectively and also save time. Thanks for watching. And I wish you the best of luck with your studies.